All right, welcome fans. We got another special guest today, very, very special guest who's going to come in and talk today, and that's none other than Mr. Pete Avick. Welcome. Joe, buddy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, we, we've been friends for <laughs> 20 years, and in those 20 years, when I met you, I didn't have this gray, and you didn't have that gray. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it just came up pretty quick there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see your I see your kiss box set up in the back. Yeah, it's about that a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, you you man, you're a busy guy. This is the first time we've had a chance to catch up in quite some time. Um, it's been so, way too long, man. Yeah. So tell me what what you've been up to recently. Oh, geez, man. Uh, we're playing a lot right now. The Brett Michaels band's playing a lot, like always. Uh, and you know. Uh, uh, I just finished my second book. It should be on sale in a couple of weeks. Uh, real excited about that. Um, I have my, you know, Shining Soul Candle Company uh, that we're working really hard on, as always. Uh, and I, um, I, in the next few weeks, will be releasing. I have a a, 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 a single barrel whiskey uh, with a local distillery in Virginia that is branding it. Uh, we're co-branding it together. Nice. Awesome. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> it's going to be great. You're the first person I spoke to about that. You're That's breaking news on your show. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. So um, tell us about the uh, upcoming Party Gras Tour. It looks like you guys are hitting some of the big amphitheaters now coming up next, starting in July there out at the old uh, the old DTE up in Detroit there. And the, uh, Detroit's up tonight. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's something that Brett has always wanted to do, this kind of... Um, thing where other guests join him on stage through the night uh so that the music doesn't break up but yet you know there's not so starships opening for us and then night ranger goes on right before us and then when we play uh mark mcgrath who's one of our great buddies from the 90s um uh sugar ray uh is going to get up and play some songs and Steve Vajari that was uh formerly of journey is going to get up and play some journey songs and the the whole thing with brett is that the whole night is nothing but hit music. And, you know, I know that sometimes there's some artists and, and some of the super fans that like to hear deep cuts, but, you know, to Brett, this is a night of just hit songs from everybody. And uh, and it's something he's always dreamed of doing. And with the success of, of Poison during the uh, stadium tour, I mean, you saw it, the reviews were that Poison took, you know, they won, Whether you know, whatever you want to say, they won, uh, you know, Live Nation uh, uh, put put us out on these dates. There's only 12 of them right now uh, in the big, big amphitheaters, but we're playing the biggest of them. We're playing DTE, we're playing uh, uh, Chicago uh, and, and a handful of others of, of the real big ones. And it's, it's a, you know, it's a branding thing. Brett, this party girl is something Brett wants to brand at, much like Lollapalooza or Ozfest, where eventually, uh, eventually we don't even play. It's just, it's just something else. Uh, other, other bands that that are produced by Brett Michaels, uh, the show itself and the atmosphere and the vibe. And it's just, it's it's um, it's been a lot of work to make this come to way Brett wants it to be. But right down to when you walk in the door the atmosphere is going to be, or walk in the gates, the atmosphere is going to feel a certain way. And uh, even the, even the very first song that gets played at five 30 in the afternoon over the speakers, over the PA system is a, a collection of a, of a, a, a mixtape basically that Brett has made. So th to him, this is not just a concert. Brett is, um, this is him just throwing a party for his friends. So the entire experience He's treating it. He's treating it like a gigantic house party, where from the second you walk in the door, you you are engulfed in a particular experience. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to be nothing but a good time. That's for sure. There you go. Right. 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 <laughs> so it's been a lot of work and very, very. Um, it's a labor of love, though, and it's going to be great. And and at being Brett's buddy for twenty years, watching this come to fruition for him has been amazing yeah all right um so tell me uh i know i haven't seen you guys in quite some time who is the current version who's in the brett michaels band as of right now uh right now me and rob are the only guys you would remember 
um, we have a a female drummer named Mary who uh, sings sings she has this beautiful voice and she she's a powerhouse on the drums. Uh, she's great. Uh, we have Norman Voss on the bass guitar. Uh, again, both these guys are buddies of mine from home. You know, uh, Brett's always let me bring bring my my uh, Northern Virginia posse with me. And then the uh, we've on the Mardi Gras on the Party Gras tour. We're also going to have um, two backup singers, uh, Becky Clark, who plays percussion, and Dean Kramer, who also plays acoustic and electric guitar. Um, you know, Brett likes that Skinnered look with all those people on the stage. So we're we're going to get all of that. And of course, Dean was in Funny Money and also plays with you in another some some of your side gigs, right? Yeah, yeah. Dean was in Funny yeah. Money, and, and truth be told, Dean should have been in Kicks. Um, that's his story to tell. But uh, <laughs> but Dean, I've known Dean for almost thirty years, and and he's awesome. And he's a great buddy of mine. And the opportunity came, and he didn't bat an eye to to to, to take it. He jumped in, and and uh, he fit in perfectly. And then, as I mentioned, you also do a bunch of uh, other type of shows when you're not out on the road. With oh, the rat. you know what? You asked me what else I was up to, and I didn't even say anything about that <laughs> stuff. Uh, yeah, you know, um, you, you know, my best friend in the whole world, Chuck, my the original drummer in BMB. Uh, me and him go out and do a lot of acoustic shows um, locally. And a buddy of mine named Ray Madonna, who was actually my drummer before Chuck, believe it or not, we we do some acoustic shows, but uh, out touring in out touring everywhere me and chad from faster pussycat uh have been doing doing a a cool show that we that we really like it's an acoustic set with a timeline set between 1978 and 1992 and we do one song from every year and we tell stories about how that song affected us and how it affected the music industry and it's just basically a timeline in the history of rock uh and it goes over really really good and dean kramer has been joining us for those too yeah, so it seems definitely a lot that sounds like it keeps you busy there for sure. Yeah. And then we do this, that, and the other, which is me, Dean, Chad, and Eric Brittingham from Cinderella, but it's a full on live rock band, like the full on live thing. But we still do that timeline and the set list like that. How do you find time to fit all these shows in your schedule? It's just amazing. Yeah. You just, man, you got to keep going. <laughs> you got to keep going. The world's upside down, man. It costs. You know, when when a, when a Wendy's cheeseburger costs twelve dollars, you gotta you gotta hustle right now just to pay your bills, right? Yeah, that's one thing too. Uh, obviously, um, you know, with all this uh, talk about how a lot of these bands out on the road nowadays are constantly uh, piping in music, or you know, there, a lot of people are saying certain bands aren't playing live, and you 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 pretty much have a solid stance against that whole process. Yeah. Well, so you know what's funny is I appreciate technology. You and me have known that. I remember sitting on a bus with you 15 years ago, like I had just gotten a brand new MacBook that day. And and it was when the whole MacBook thing was brand new. And uh, I was loading my Pro Tool system on it. And and, and so uh, do you remember that day at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was so excited about my new computer. It was when MacBooks had silver keys. I remember I kept showing you the silver <laughs> keys. But um. But uh, I'm so into the technology and I appreciate the art of playing the tracks. I appreciate the art of it for pop music and and solo artists, singers that are that are just basically karaoke in it. That's, karaoke is not the word. Uh, but, you know, I, I understand the place for it, but I also believe the place for it's not rock and roll exactly as yeah. uh <laughs> and, and if you and if you're trying to be be beat around the bush about it if we're talking about motley crew it's ridiculous you know i i don't pull any punches everyone knows i love vince i consider vince a friend um i, I you know i think john five's incredible player um and i love some of those motley crew songs some of those songs are the best written songs in history um but a band that's been playing hard rock and roll for 40 years should be able to get out there and play that stuff. Yeah. I mean, they're not the only ones, obviously there's other people out there. They're, you know, doing it, but obviously they're the most, the most talked about one right now, obviously. Well, they're the most talked about one because again, it's not needed for what they do. You can go see a cover band in any 
play any bar in the country, play a Motley Crue song and make it sound like a Motley Crue song. Right mm -hmm. now, if Def Leppard, who invented playing the tracks because of what happened to Rick Allen and they had to invent the technology and the way those records were produced, the way Hysteria was produced is impossible to pull that off without 25 people. I understand making it sound like the record, using some tracks to sound like the records, but Motley Cruz even got those backup singers up there. They're, they're, it, you know, I, I respect that Def Leppard has always tried to give you the best sounding show they possibly can. And they all sing and they all play. They're just piping in some extra things. Do you get where I'm going? Mm -hmm. if, if if the stuff that Def Leppard's packing, piping in went away, you would probably not notice the difference. However, Motley Crue's literally playing to a recording. You know, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of difference on how that goes, if you ask me. So, what, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To each their own, man. Brett is a live guy, and we're always going to play live, and and that that's what it is. Whether it's Poison or the solo band, we're we're a live band. Hey, speaking of the uh, Brett Michaels band, um, you know, it seems like you guys. Uh, for the most part, you, you really don't dig too deep into the catalog much no more, oh, as you used to. Are we you know, have this conversation in front of everybody. We've been having this conversation for twenty years. You <laughs> no, well, I'm just bringing up one song in particular because I was kind of surprised when I didn't hear it one time. That was a uh, Fallen Angel. Yeah, uh, we haven't been doing Fallen Angel since since uh, it's been a couple of years. We haven't done it. He's talking about putting it back in a set during Party Girl. Uh, and I don't know, I do, I do not know the reason why. I've never asked him why we stopped doing that in the set. I mean, it was one of their biggest hits of all time, and uh, the fans really want to hear it. He he has a reason for why we're not playing mm -hmm. it. It's certainly not because the band can't play it. You've seen us do it before. <laughs> not, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not nothing to do with that. I just didn't. It was such a surprise. I remember seeing uh, when you first took it out. It was. Yeah, it's been a while, like you said, but uh, I was just kind of surprised to see that one. You know, some songs you can understand, but that one always seemed to be one of the ones that you would, yeah. you know, very rarely. It's It would be almost like kind of taking out every rose has its thorn. You would right. never see that. Right. And, and I love the song, but we have put Ride the Wind in the set, which makes me very happy. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. I love Ride the Wind. So I, uh, what about Avic? What's the update on you guys? Are you guys still doing a couple shows here and there and everything else? Or? A couple here and there, man. Uh, all of our schedules are so crazy. We wrote a new song this year and released it at the beginning of the year. Uh, got a lot of attention. I think it struck a nerve with a lot of people our age. That's what it was supposed to do. It was called My Best Days. Um, and I have, you know, I always have a bunch of song ideas. Well, the one thing that Avic has done that I think that you would appreciate is we canned the whole cover thing and went back to being an all original band. So I remember you came to see us one time uh, years ago. And I think that you were just a little disappointed at the cover band aspect when we were partying and stuff like that. And maybe about four years ago, I just shoved that all away and put it back to what it was supposed to be. So when we do perform, it's an all original set. Yeah, well, I remember back when I seen you a couple of times, you were doing like three sets a night when we yeah. were out there. So obviously you had to throw in other types of songs, you know. But I love it. <laughs> I love doing that with my acoustic sets. I play three and four sets a night. I love it. Any last words before I let you go here? No, I got no last words. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that anyone wants to talk to or hear from me. I'm grateful that I feed my kids by playing music. And uh, uh, I'm grateful that I know people like you, man. All right. Well, I appreciate your time as always.